Hi, I'm Glenn Whip with the Los Angeles Times. The Killing is returning for its fourth and final season on Netflix, August the 1st. Joining me today, star of the show, Joel Killam, Kinnaman. Killaman. Killaman. <laughs> Killing Kinnaman, yeah. Uh, fourth and final season. It's really going to be the final season, right? This is the final season. We conclude the show. You guys aren't just messing with us again? Nah, I'm messing with you this time. This is, it's, been, it's been like the cockroach of cable television. It just won't die. Um, and ironically enough, it's called Killing. But um, yeah, so this is, this is the final. Um, I'm, we were all really happy that we got a chance to, to wrap it up. I, I think I underestimated how much it meant to me and how valuable it felt to actually have a real conclusion of the show. It was, it was really satisfying to shoot it. And we shot the last episode with uh, Jonathan Demme directing it, mm -hmm. um, who, if people don't know, he directed Philadelphia and uh, um, what's... Uh, How about Stop silence, Making Sense? And Silence, silence of the, the Lambs. Lambs. Yeah, yeah um, so, you know, it was, it was a great last run, and um, so very happy with that. In six episodes. Yeah. So they were able to sort of, it's, it's a smaller season, yeah. but just pack a lot in on those six episodes. Yeah, and then, I mean, it's also, since this time it's exclusively to Netflix, or not, but at least initially, so the episodes are a little longer. Um, okay. I think before the episodes were 42 minutes, and now they're 55, I think. Okay. Yeah, it was, and, and we had a lot of, a lot of passionate fans of mm -hmm. the show. That's why you keep coming back. I yeah, think. no, I mean, it was a... Uh, I think that's what Netflix um, felt, and they also felt that it was a very strong pitch from Vina. Vina said the, the showrunner for the last season, and and they could really... Like, I think that the the viewership of the show wasn't as big as, um, as AMC might have hoped, but what I think Netflix and everybody realized was the people that watched it Really appreciated it, yeah. and real, and it meant something to them. Yeah, it'll probably be the kind of people that watch it on Netflix and then go back and stream <laughs> it again and again, and oh, yeah. But I mean, we had one one question from somebody wondering: Is the tone of the show moving from AMC to Netflix? Is that going to change what you're able to do? Are you going to be able to push boundaries a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, it, for sure. I mean, we get to, this season, Holder gets to talk like Holder should have been talking. <laughs> right. Um, so, I mean, we can, we can use whatever words we want to use. And, um, and I mean, because there, there's, there's no rating. Yeah. Because it's on the Internet. So, I think, um, you know, sometimes we, you could feel a little held back by those limitations that were, were set up. You know, when you do a show on AMC, you, you can have two shits an episode. Uh huh. I think on these LA Times conversations, you can't have any. But oh, really? I thought, <laughs> no, we, I thought I, I, we had free press in this maybe, country. Maybe we get two. This is bullshit. <laughs> well, there's our two. <laughs> okay, we got two. Well, actually, yeah. um, well, so so you're and you're you're saying you're able to talk. The holder is able to. I mean, a lot yeah. of the fans they have these collections of holderisms. <laughs> right, right. So these things are going to expand and get more real and more like they should have been the whole time. Well, I think I started with like an avalanche of cuss words just sort of just to get that off my chest. I, I don't know if that made the cut, but Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, I mean, but 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 the show is still the show and um I mean, it was just that we didn't have to censor ourselves in any way. So, uh -huh. it was a little more it was a little bit more free in that way, but but you know, the characters still except for a couple of cuss words here and there, they cuss. We don't have there, there's still not really nudity in that way. Um, it's um, yeah. It's it's the killing. But I mean, for your character, for Holder, it would seem like the language would be kind of a huge thing because he's all about that kind of. Yeah, the, he's a street yeah, guy. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So for me, for me, it did change yeah. a bit. It was a, it was a very liberating experience. Was that? Um, aspect of the character, the language, was that always there um, from day one, or did you bring some of that to it? No. Um, in the pilot, there was a there was a line where that, for me, signified that you know he might have uh, you know a way of speaking, um, and um, and then I sort of went with it, and then when we shot the whole pilot. I had a lot of fun playing for 
Patty Jenkins, who, who was yeah. directing the, the yeah. pilot. Um, so it was my way of sort of entertaining her and, and trying to make her laugh. And then a lot of the stuff that sort of came out of that, um, then after, you know, there was a big, long break after, after you shoot a pilot when they, when they finish writing the next season after they get the pickup. And, um, and then I noticed that it was, you know, it was getting more and more into there. And, and when I was, stuff that I would sort of ad-lib or improvise, um, it might not end up in the cut because that's not what that scene was about, but then I'd find that in later episodes. And so I felt that it was a really, um, it was an exhilarating collaboration yeah. um, with the writers and, and to feel how the character sort of evolved. And, and, um, and I'd never done TV in this way before, so, so that was one of my biggest takeaways, I think, of, of feeling that the character's development was an organic process that was always in motion. And you, where did that kind of study of that dude come from? I mean, did you, had you observed some of these people after coming to the states? Or do you find that kind of guy in Sweden too? Yeah, you 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 could find him in Sweden too. I think it's it's um, it was a combination and definitely some home brewed uh, accent that 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 I came up with. I I went to high school for a year in Texas, mm. where you know, and it, and I found it was very segregated. Um, but I was a little skinny white kid that that um, that listened to Too Short, and uh, so I didn't really, I couldn't really affiliate with the the rednecks that were all, almost all the white guys in in the school were rednecks. So I ended up hanging out much more with the Hispanic and the black guys in school. So I, when I did the killing, a lot of like memories mm. from from the, my senior year in high school came back, and 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 then I think. Um, you know, I've always been a fan of uh, of of that culture, and, and always been really interested in it. So, so it it became um, you know it got it was some you know pollination that came from different areas. And, um, Did you I, hear from some of those guys in high school after the? No, I, unfortunately, I don't have any contact with yeah. anyone from that from that time. But then it was also I also went you know and did a lot of research. I did. I did ride-alongs with the uh, the Compton sheriffs, and when they were doing like search and seizures, and mm -hmm. and then I went to a lot of NA meetings, and I sat in on NA meetings both in LA and in uh, in, in Seattle, and so so it was a uh, it was one of those uh, I think I prepared for the role about five or six weeks, and and it was just a lot of different um, a lot of different inspiration that sort of became something that. Um, that became its own thing. Yeah, and I asked some of these questions because I feel like if I don't, I'm gonna my Twitter account's gonna just be <laughs> flamed by angry killing fans. So um, Anna wants to know who is a better cop, Holder or Alex Murphy? <laughs> hmm. Who is a better cop? Well, Alex Murphy. He did get blown up, so I think yeah, that's a that's a strike. So uh, yeah, yeah, you know, strike one, no, and two and three. So I'd say I'd say Holder probably. Yeah, yeah he's still. Yeah, because he's alive and kicking. You know? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, will Holder keep the killing rocks? This is the the account that will Holder keep Lyndon grounded, or will it be the other way around? What's the dynamic and tease a little bit for season four. Uh, I think it goes back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, some very interesting developments in, in the relationship between Holder and Lynn in this season and the conclusion. I think people are going to be very happy with it. What do you think about it? Like all six episodes will be available, right, on August yeah. the 1st. So I assume that a lot of people watching this are... I don't know what day that falls on, Saturday, Friday, whatever, but that's six hours. I mean, you can mm -hmm. just knock it out right right in it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I love that they, that they do that because that's how I watch shows. I mean, I, I, don't, I barely watch TV anymore at all. I, like, I download my shows or have them on, a, um, I have them on DVDs, and, and I like, if it's a show that I like, I watch at least two or three in a row. So... Uh, Rachel wants to know. She's very sad to see the show go. It, I mean, it is going right, you guys. Again, <laughs> yes. 
I, I, I'll own. believe that when I see it. But um, what's your most memorable experience from working on the show? Um, I can't think of like any one thing, but it's definitely the collaboration with Murray. Murray mm -hmm. Enos plays Linden. Um, one of, or maybe probably, yeah, my favorite work relationship so far. It's just um, we were always a team, and, and when you work on a TV show, you you always you have writers and directors that come in and sort of have their um, their idea and their take on things, and and we were always like a team, and we would we would always back each other and our our, our each other's ideas, and um, and we just had a lot of fun every day, and and a lot of fun in between, and. Um, and before takes, and you know, often we'd be just like cracking up, and then and then they'd be like, action, and then we'd be like, <laughs> and, and very yeah. dour, and you know, so we we had a lot of fun on the show, and uh, and that's definitely what I what I'll take with me the most from it. It must be kind of a trip to get back together again each time after the show's canceled and yeah. then it's renewed again. It's like wow, good yeah. to see you again, right? Yeah, no. And then we were neighbors for a while in uh, in L.A. Yeah, and but I think I had to move out of there before I came and visited. I, I moved away from where I was living, and um, and then a week after that, that was the first time I came and visited at at her house. I think that's we were, it was just too close, it was too yeah. close. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> you you saw enough of each other. Yeah, yeah during sure. the day. Yeah. Um, Angel wants to know: Is your was Holder's magnificent mustache called for in the script, <laughs> or was it a personal touch? Um, no, I think that was something that I had on. Did I have that on the audition? I don't remember. The hair too was was interesting, just the way. Yeah, yeah. greasy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A little greasy. You didn't have to do a whole lot of time in uh, makeup, or maybe you did just to get that kind of greasy look. Oh, I've never had so much makeup on in anything that I've done. Really? Yeah. Than I did on the killing. I'd I'd be in makeup for uh, at least twenty minutes. A day. Twenty minutes. Yeah, that's quite long. I mean, usually, yeah, 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 yeah for yeah, other stuff yeah. I've done, it was maybe like one or two minutes. Right. And um, so there was a. I mean, Charles. Paul Lear, who was the makeup artist on the show, is incredibly talented, and he, you know, he'd sculpt the faces and and you know be very aware of the light and have dialogue with the photographer, just so he, you know, like he'd paint like deep creases in here and put like bags under okay. our eyes, yeah. and, um, and the whole color was uh, the color palette of all the faces was something that you know he was always in control of, and, um, so that. We all we often come in and just look too happy or too too you know, healthy, feel, feeling right? too good, and yeah. then he'd be like, "Got work to do." Yeah. And I'd I'd often go home to LA on the weekends, um, and you know, because we'd shoot in Vancouver in the winter, and it's not the happiest place. And then I go surfing, and and then I come back with a little bit of a tan, and and then he'd be like, "It's gonna be 45 minutes today." <laughs> yeah. He said, "I told you to stay out of yeah, the sun." Yeah. Right? You're the sunblock. <laughs> Yeah, just go inside, stay inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'd be very, he'd be very yeah. disappointed with me. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have some questions. Uh, Kavita is wondering. I mean, in season one was was kind of the the you know people freaked out at the end of the season. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of criticism um, from fans too. Mm -hmm. um, did it have? Do you, do you think that she's wondering? Did it have any? Effect on the future storylines, or maybe the way that the show told its story. No, no, I don't think so. I mean, it was very, you know, I think the more observant fan would have uh, noticed that it was based on a Danish original show. That was um, the first Danish season was was a twenty-two full hour. Yeah. It was twenty-two episodes, twenty-two full hour episodes, and our first two seasons were um, 26, 45-minute episodes. So that storyline was, you know, it was pretty, it followed the Danish version pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was a bit of, like, a marketing mess up because people felt like they'd been promised to get a conclusion after one season. And it was, like, tune in to find out who killed right. Rosie Larson. And I guess that was 
<laughs> that was enough to get people very, very angry. Um, I thought it was pretty silly, and I think, you know, if you like a show, if you're watching it, then trust the people that are doing it, that, mm -hmm. that they got something good, or watch another show. And I mean, a lot of people did, and, and that's they're, they're entitled to that. But to get all <laughs> up in their panties about it, I mean, I thought that was a, yeah. come on. There's, wor there's more important things to, to get angry about. But, um, but of course, it's um, um, for the people that, that, you know, really watched it and felt disappointed. But I think that the ones that stuck around, they felt that they got rewarded for their patience. It sounds like that reaction took you a little off guard. Um, yeah, I've never been on a TV show before, and, and not especially not one in America. So, I mean, I was surprised how present the fans were, and and how passionate they were about it. And I was really excited about that. I thought that that was a, um, you know, it felt very very rewarding to be a part of something that people cared about and really felt spoke to them, and and, mm -hmm. and that that you were sort of in the middle of that process. And you, while we were shooting, we were getting feedback, and. Um, that that was a, a very rewarding experience, but that part of it, I, I mean, I just thought it was a little silly. Yeah. Um, but um. It's like you promised. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. yeah. Taking away their toys. <laughs> um, the Joel Kinnaman fans. I assume that's just who's asking the question. What was the most difficult thing for you to do while portraying Holder? Besides, say, the twenty minutes in the makeup chair. We've already covered that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it wasn't. It, I mean, it wasn't. This was a very creative and a, and a you know very rewarding experience throughout. I think the the most difficult part of this was like the first seven episodes before it was revealed that Holder was an addict mm. and and that they wanted to sort of play the mystery of him. Um, because as I'm so used to shooting films, um, then you have like a two-hour piece, and and you and and the the challenge is to um, give all these contrasts and 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 surprise the people that you're making the film with. Like, look, even this color can be in this character, and it's just going to make the experience broader. But since here there was um, you know there was a way of manipulating the audience. Where you only, where you don't want to show certain colors because you want to, you want them wondering, is this guy really a good mm -hmm. guy? And um, and that was a completely different process that I hadn't been aware of. And there was also uh, in the beginning when we were shooting it, there was a, a tradition or um, a culture of of secrecy um, between the writers and the actors. So we weren't getting all the information, and um, and I was really frustrated about that at first. And um, um, so. But then after that point, then that aspect of the character sort of came out of play, and, and then I could, you know, throw in all the colors that I wanted to throw in. And, um, um, yeah, you hear that a lot from actors on, on these serial dramas that, you know, you're, you're, you're just kind of fall, you're, you're just getting the scripts, and, you, and sometimes a script will come, and it's like, really? That's, yeah. That's, yeah, you, they're kind of keeping you on the your toes in terms of what's going on with the character. Yeah, yeah, I'm, and that's not always a, that can be a scary right. process as well. You're, you're really putting your trust into these, uh, these, I mean, when you're doing a film, then you then you read the script and you make a decision if you want to do it or not, um, because you know yeah. what what, right. what character this is. And, and, um, and when you're on a TV show like this, then, you know, it's evolving, so. So hopefully you'll have a good relationship with the writers where, where it evolves in a way yeah. that you like and are inspired with. And I, I was lucky in that way, but it was just the, the initial process. Um, I mean, we were also finding our way and finding our way to communicate and, and, and understanding each other. Um, but but that, was a, that, was, that was a scary process at first. A lot of people on Twitter are asking, why aren't you on Twitter? <laughs> um, well, I think that um, I don't have any social media. I mean, I have yeah. like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and whatnot, but I only have it like secret from my from my own friends. Um, I just think that there's like as an actor, you're always you're trying to play somebody else. So I think that you should do as little um, you should do as little 
research as no, not research. You should do as little press as as possible because it's. Um, I think it'll be it's, the the less people know about me as a person, the easier it will be for them to suspend their disbelief when they see me playing another character. Now you talked about some season four resolutions and you know coming to a conclusion. Are we ever going to get the definitive answer on Holder's vegetarianism? <laughs> No, that is uh, something that is constantly evolving with, uh, within Stephen. I like so, that. Uh, Maple bacon donut, <laughs> no problem. Yeah, it's, that was it's a, a donut. I love I loved when they started running that thing. That was funny. I really, really liked it. He had so many quirky sides. There's a uh, fan in Barcelona asking, are you watching the World Cup? And Very much you? so, and I'm wondering what, what we're doing here right yeah. now. You know, what are we doing here right now? Who's playing right now? Uh, Iran. I think it, that game is just over. Iran against Nigeria. It was. I watched the first half. It was really boring. It's the worst game so far. I'll see. You're not missing anything. I know. I know. All right. But he wants to know. Also, the guy from Barcelona wants to know who are you rooting for? Sweden didn't make it. So, so you're rooting for Spain, right? No, I think I'm. I'm, I'm actually. I'm rooting for France. I think. Um, and um, I have a very particular reason. I mean, I really like the, the French team, but it's also this um, Le Pen and the, the, right, the right wing fascist front got 25% in the, the last uh, EU election. It's a really, really uh, scary time in Europe right now. The, the right wing is on the rise. And, and in 98, when France won the World Cup, um, the, the Le Pen just dove down. They, they, they lost a lot of supporters because that whole team, the heroes of the country were all black and Moroccan and, and you know, a lot of Muslim guys. And um, so, uh, so I think it would be a very good thing for Europe and for France if, uh, if they won the cup and, and, and we really need it right now. I think I have a World Cup team right now. Yeah. Thank you for giving yeah. me a reason. Yeah. To, uh, I'm one of these Americans that doesn't watch that much. Yeah. Know? But yeah, good, good. Well, thanks for coming in. Thank you for I'm going to let me. you get back to, to the soccer. I, Thank I don't you. know what's the next soccer, game. Soccer, I don't use that word. It's the football, football. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. And for more uh, television coverage, please go to latimes.com. Thanks for watching.